Moses said, do not let us depart from here if your presence will not go with us. For how shall they know that we are a separated people? How shall they know you are distinguished for your glorious presence? We thank you for your presence, that majestic presence. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. When you cultivate the art of God's presence, you will walk in dimensions of the spirit that will make you afraid because you are operating with a backing that no power in existence can limit. The preaching of the word is not about English. No, no. Otherwise, some of us will not be in ministry. But Paul said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech. But I came with the demonstration of the spirit. That your faith will not be upon the wisdom of a man, but upon the power of God. What you see happening in this place, that effect on your body, that effect on your mind and your spirit that you cannot help. This is not psychology. This is the manifest presence of God. For when he shows up, both animate and inanimate things, no matter how hardened your heart is, the Bible says that his presence, even the mountains harder than your hearts, keep like lambs. This is why we cultivate the art of his presence. We have no message without his presence. In a generation and time when everybody wants to say something, Everybody is saying something. Elihu said, I heard you speak and so I kept quiet. Because I thought you were older than me and you should have something to say. But Elihu was quick to note to them. That when it comes to the realm of delivering the wisdom of God, it's not about age. He said, but there is a spirit. There is a presence that can tabernacle in a man. And the inspiration that derives from that presence can make any man of understanding the capacity to comprehend spiritual things and deliver them with accuracy such that you can walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit and grant that the things that the Holy Ghost wants in the lives of the people are the things that are delivered. You become an oracle void of the capacity to minister on your own. The Bible says our sufficiency is not of ourselves. We didn't call ourselves, it said our sufficiencies of God who has made us qualified ministers of the new covenant. Not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. Thank you for the privilege. Without the presence of God, you won't be here. That presence. This has been my message for years. If you lose the presence of God, the psalmist said, cast me not away from your presence and Cain departed from the presence of God cast me not away from your presence let it rain let it rain yeah. open the floodgates of heaven let it rain and he showed me a river that flowed from the throne as clear as crystal and it flowed to the tree of life and the leaves of that tree was for the healing of the nation let it rain from your throne let it rain open the floodgates of heaven let it rain like the dew of heaven let it rain until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine and then the fruitful vine be counted for a forest let it rain open the floodgates of heaven Can you just be silent? 
Just play keyboards, just play anything. Just be still in his presence. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in your name. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. Le Mariana Mosona na Mariana na na Mosona na 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 na. Senyana Mosuma na 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 Mosia. Just be still in His presence. She na 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 Mosia na 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 Mosia. Mariana na mosh, yeah, hey. Shira na 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 na. There's a sounds in the spirit. Mariana na mosho na 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 mosho na 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 na. Shina na na mosho pari na na na. And be not drunk with wine wherein in excess. But be ye filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart unto the Lord. Just leave her alone. And ye are come out to Mount Zion, the place of the firstborn, where there are innumerable companies of angels, the spirits of just men made perfect. Where the blood of sprinkling speaks. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted and all the nations shall flow through there is a kind of fire that does not destroy there is a kind of fire that refines there is a kind of fire every spirit that is not of God along this circumference please ushers take note some people are going to be delivered right now from outside lift your hands let the power of God fall every demonic influence or possession of all sorts outside Shataka Parata Rakataya I dethrone principalities I dethrone powers and rulers I speak against spiritual wickedness in the heavens now inside this building I pray everyone under the influence of darkness bring that lady out everyone under the influence of darkness release them now chains be broken chains be broken upon Mount Zion let there be deliverance Chains, bring that lady out. 
I proclaim emancipation. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Satan, let God's people go. Let God's people go. Let God's people go. Yokes outside the fire of the Holy Ghost. Shata ta ta ta. Maka pareka rekete makoporiata ekepo koto mapata likete reketeka mapoto kote rekete kepariata meko pososo kota rekete beleketa rapariekata outside the fire of the Holy Ghost is falling every walk of darkness for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy annihilate liquidate the works of darkness outside there is an angel of deliverance outside there is an angel of deliverance outside sheketeka reketeka ba repo shata mariata ba rakata peketelekosia Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. I see a chain, and that chain is a snake. Come, bring this lady. So let hope rise. You will leave her right now. Come out of her. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Out in the name of Jesus. Go. That devil, you are going. Come out of her right now. Go in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Come out in the name of Jesus. Go. Go. This is Mount Zion. Where there is deliverance, she's free. You will not hide. Come out! Come out! Take her out. She's going to cough out something. Run with her. She will cough out something. Come. Highest praise to the king. Listen, look at what I'm seeing. A snake is biting this lady. This is why she's holding this. I'm seeing a snake in the realm of the spirit. You're a wicked spirit. Your time is gone. You are living now. Out. Come out. Come out of her. With a loud shout, you will go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The fire of the Holy Ghost is against you. You're going. Go. Go. Out right now. Go. Devil of darkness. I challenge you by the power that is in the name of Jesus. You cannot stand. She has come to a place of liberty. You are going now. Now, out of her, out of her. Highest praise to the king. Highest praise to the king. Highest praise to the king. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you.
Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. I prophesy, everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto you. Everything that was lost shall be restored unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be Flames of fire. you free in Jesus name come out of her now out out you cannot hide I see you in the spirit come out right now thou foul devil of darkness come out of her for who shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it there is judgment upon you tonight and you will go out of her right now Taking all the praise, let her go, let her go now, now. Let her go. Come out of her. Let her go. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord forever he remains Lord in this place Lord let this be a place continually where your healing power will find the expression without restriction where your ability to deliver will find expression without restriction where your grace to change and transform men We will preach the truth. We will declare your counsel in truth. We refuse to follow the status quo of ministry and society. We choose to be pleasers of the mighty God. Come. Lay your hands on our shoulder. Just lay your hands on our shoulder. No, 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 listen. Just lay your hands on her shoulder. I'm seeing a serpent. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a snake. Just keep your hands on her shoulder.
Our ushers are anointed people full of the Spirit of God. You will go where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty hallelujah please be seated God bless you just leave them I welcome every one of you inside and outside those outside can you shout hallelujah God bless you. Thank you so much. Those inside, can you shout praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans 4. I apologize. We will suspend our family life series temporarily. We will resume next month. Hallelujah. We are supposed to be talking about family life and relationship. But there is an urgent message in my spirit. So we will move by the Spirit. Romans. Thank you, Jesus. You deserve. You deserve. You deserve. The lifting of my hands. To you, you deserve, you deserve, you deserve the lifting of my hand. Listen, some of you who will be ministers, when you become a minister, make sure listen to me i'm not speaking to everybody but i'm speaking to some of you who will later have churches and ministries refuse to be like other people you may be strange you may be uncommon you may be criticized but make sure you walk with god consistently don't just try to do things because people do them. Don't just try to say things because people say them. It is they that are led of the Spirit that are the sons of God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 4. Romans 4. Verse 17. If you are there, say amen. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before whom he believed, even God, who giveth life to the dead and collect those things which are not as though they were this is talking about Abraham now who is Victoria 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 come who against hope believed in hope You had a dream yesterday night 
and a dog was chasing you who is that person you were running to an extent that when you woke up it was affecting you please who is the person I'm just flowing as the Lord is showing me please make sure you come out let's finish the scripture please we're out of time who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations A lady from Katsina. Is she here? Katsina. Who? Come. Whatever you came to find, you will find it tonight. Coming all the way from Katsina. Look at me. The Lord will do something in your life tonight that will surprise you. Hmm? Can I pray for you? Thank you, Jesus. Hold my hands, both of your hands. Jesus, do something in her life. Let an anointing come upon you. May it set you on fire. A presence that you cannot understand. I pray. I bless you with a hunger for his presence. I bless you with the spirit of prayer and supplication. I bless you with the spirit of might. May you be strengthened. These hands I'm holding will go back and you will do terrible things in righteousness. I pray for you. And even that yoke of delay upon your life is lifted. It's lifted. Take as many of the messages and take it back to Katsina. This was your intention. The Lord will satisfy your heart. In Jesus' name. Who against all hope, verse 18, believed in hope. You know why they are bowing? Look at this. Let me explain something to you. So that some of you don't just think this is idolatry. Listen. They are not bowing to me. Are you listening to me? Bring the lady who is shouting outside. They are not bowing to me. This is what I want you to understand. They are bowing to the government that is represented in this place. For the Bible says, at the mention of the name of Jesus, is it not written in your Bible that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess? With everything. Come. Yours is a fire. You are not oppressed. Look at me. A fire will come upon your spirit. Your eyes will open. Let the veil be opened. In the name of Jesus. A fire will run from your right leg down to your chest. It's an impartation of grace. For this has been your hunger. You came with a hunger. Lord Jesus, visit her. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will walk in a mighty healing anointing. You will do terrible things in righteousness. I call for the fountain from within your spirit. Let there be a breaking of the outer man and the release of the spirit. We will shout for your glory with everything, with everything. We will shout for your praise. Let's continue. I must establish what I'm trying to do tonight I really wish that we have a lot of time someone outside will shout heavily under the anointing please when when that person shouts let me have the person here just the power and the fire of God at the same time will come upon the person outside when that happens let me see the person let's continue 19 and be not weak in faith 
he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither the deadness of Sarah's womb 20 are you there let's read together one to read you can look up his projected one to read through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God next verse stop just the first four words one two one more time one more time one more time the holy spirit began to speak to me this is not a message to koinonia this is a message to the body of christ and i pray that it will go far the same finger that has taken our messages beyond us let that invisible hand take this message beyond the borders of this nation in the name of Jesus the Holy Ghost began to speak to me how that how that many believers listen please are unable to walk in the reality of the power and authority of the word because of unbelief and many believers have not yet come to a point where you are convinced about the truthfulness and the reality of the word of God we sing songs that talk about the power of God. We sing songs that talk about the grace of God. We sing songs about the things that God has done and what he can do. We make seeming confessions of faith. But embedded in our heart is a stronghold of unbelief. And the Holy Ghost began to communicate a lamentation in my spirit that the body of Christ is walking in great unbelief. Great unbelief. Our capacity to trust the word of God enough such that we can allow it to rule our lives. Such that we can stake our lives at the integrity of the word is what is wanting in the body of Christ. That's the person. Bring the person. There is a level of realness. Please look at me. There is a level of realness. It's not just one person. It was an instruction to one person. But the hunger of another person is going to make the person catch the fire. So it will be two people. There is a realness. There is an authenticity about the reality of the spirit. Listen, there is an authenticity about the reality of the kingdom life. That if you shatter the walls of unbelief, it will bring you into a solid experience. Where you are persuaded that the things that have been written are true. There is a conviction, a solid, grounded, spiritual conviction that comes upon your heart. You know that you know that you know. You enter the realm I call the Sabbath of faith. The Sabbath of faith. The rest of faith. You're not trying to doubt. You're not trying to make yourself believe. It has become your present day reality. This is the experience that is lacking in the body of Christ. Let me tell you what we need in the body of Christ. It's not new messages. There are explicit messages. Just switch on your TV. There are all kinds of revelations that come. But what we lack is the ability to stay. Come back. 
God is not done with you. Look at me. Just look at me. Just look at me. He's not done with you. Just look at my eyes. The ability to be so convinced about the reality of the truth of God's word is one of the highest dimensions that a man can stand in the spirit. He said, Abraham, and being fully persuaded, being fully convinced, there is a depth of conviction about spiritual realities. Even those that preach great messages, that message has not changed them. There is a conviction. This is a pulpit. There's no message that would change me from knowing that this is a pulpit. There is a rest. I believe. I am persuaded. There are impartations that are just going on because this is a strong message from the heart of the spirit to the body of Christ. Let me tell you something. Demons are not afraid of crowd. That's the reason why through diabolic powers you can get crowd. Demons are not even afraid of powerful words. And the seed is the word. When it was falling on the soil, Satan didn't mind because he knew some would be a waste. Do you know that Satan is not afraid of the word of God? What Satan is afraid is your reception of the word of God such that it becomes living and active. This is what makes him afraid. For even the demons know that Jesus is Lord and they tremble. But it does not change them. Are you listening to me? Oh, Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my provider. Jesus is this and that. We confess it. We have Bible studies explaining certain things. I've been given authority over snakes and scorpions. There is no conviction. Adolf Hitler came out and he believed that the Jews should be annihilated. Based on whatever revelation, he had a solid conviction and he lived his entire life till death attempting to carry out that agenda. Listen, the world is ruled by men of conviction. Satan has a solid conviction that one day he will dethrone God and that conviction keeps him alive day and night. Regardless of the number of miracles that happen in a crusade ground, Satan has never gone back to give himself worry and ask the demons to retreat conviction if you will believe half of the revelations you know if you become convicted by their reality it will change you every time I have the opportunity to go and share the word of God people invite me and they say we are expectant that's the text they write to me and then I'm wondering you are expectant what are you waiting to see and they begin to invite their friends. Oh, Joshua Selman is coming. It's going to be a powerful meeting. Have you realized that the most powerful messages that have been preached have lacked the ability to produce the effect that those messages were supposed to carry? We preach powerful messages. Solid messages. Many of you believe you are anointed. You believe in the anointing. But you will soon find out that you are just informed that you are anointed. It has not yet become a conviction. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Who against all hope believe. And this is the cry of the spirit. There are many things God wants to release to people. There are many dimensions that God wants us to walk. Listen, I write to you, O oh, excellent Theophilus, of all the things that Jesus began to do and teach. Do and teach. We do not have a performance that solidifies our conviction. Many of you are here 
and you are hearing this word you are seeing all the miracles and the signs and the wonders a laughter will come by the spirit I'm hearing it in the realm of the spirit a laughter will come by the spirit and this is a sign a laughter will come by the spirit This is not the laughter. For there are many sounds. There is a laughter. It's purely by the Holy Ghost. Please just flow with me. This is not a normal, this is not your church. When you come for koinonia, just take away your intellect. Because it will insult it a lot. There is a laughter. Let's continue. There is a laughter. These things are signs and wonders. I pray that as you see and watch and hear these things, that the Bible will come alive to you. And you will know that this is not just some religious things. For all scripture was inspired of the Holy Ghost. Holy men moved by the Spirit began to write these things. And for as many who will believe it and walk in the conviction, he is alive and active, watching over his word to perform it. That's the laughter outside. That's the laughter outside. Please bring the person. Lift your Bibles, everybody. I'd like you to say after me in the name of Jesus. I believe that the Holy Ghost inspired holy men to write this. And that the truth of God's word is contained in this. Wherever I see it and read it. I will understand and I will believe. Do you know I'm going to say something that will surprise you. The Holy Ghost told me this and it rattled my theology. He said there is only one reason why prayer and fasting was designed in the Bible. Prayer and fasting was designed to attack only one limitation, unbelief. That's all. I've read many scriptures that talk about many things that prayer and fasting does. But when you study in the spirit, you will find out that at the heart of everything is unbelief. They could not cast the one with the epileptic spirit. And Jesus said it was because of unbelief. He said, however, this kind goeth not but by prayer and fasting. That means prayer and fasting opens up the reality of God to you. And when God is opened up to you, unbelief, there is a stronger conviction than what your optical eyes and your ears can hear. And based on that, unbelief melts away. Yes. 
you must not have a vision to conquer unbelief. You must not have a vision and a dream. There is an activity of the spirit. For it is God who is at work in us. Both to will and to do. Are you persuaded? Oh, I'm above. We can shout it in church. This is just empty noise. If it does not come from a depth of conviction. How do I know we are not convicted? Because at every given time, we throw away the things that are supposed to govern our life and we begin to run for something else as though the word were not true. The Bible talks about men who through faith subdued kingdoms, who shut the mouth of lions, wrought righteousness, women who received their dead back to life and others who died without receiving the promise. They died in faith. These men were convicted I gave this example yesterday. Let me give it again. Sweetheart, please stand up. Come. Everybody look at this lady. Is this a lady or a guy? Answer me. Is this a lady or a guy? If I look at you right now and I'm a medical doctor and I convince you, will I be able to convince you? Why? You are persuaded. Are you trying to claim being a lady? Are you trying to work it out? You have entered the Sabbath of faith. It has become your present day reality. You live by that truth. I know I'm called of God. There is no message that will make me doubt it once. Are you listening to me? This is the dimension that the Holy Ghost has been shouting in my spirit that the body of Christ should enter. Because there is a religious spirit. I saw this in a vision that the Lord showed me. I didn't even know there was a spirit called a religious spirit. That has been fired and sent to the body of Christ. Let me tell you what that religious spirit will do. Men who are ever learning. But never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning. Hallelujah. I was going to minister to one lady. God bless you, my dear. Something happened to me. They brought a lady to me to pray for her for deliverance. And while I began to minister to this lady, the spirits in her began to manifest and they were shouting. They wouldn't stop. Just shouting and talking. And I just decided to keep quiet and listen. The devil is a liar. But under the presence of God, everything tells the truth, including him. Everything. For light cannot stand in darkness. And this lady began to shout, and this is what she said. Of course, not her, but these wicked spirits. That there is a strategy from the kingdom of darkness that is being released against the body of Christ. And then the lady just shouted, or the demons now. They just shouted. They said, switch to, is it code 507 something? And then the next thing she just turned. That this thing is a code that had been existing right from the days of Pharaoh. And he said, man of God, you are hearing me. Let me tell you. He said, remember when the children of Israel. This is a lady who normally does not even know half of that scripture. This is the spirit speaking. Attempting to challenge me. Said, do you know that in the days of Pharaoh, when he told the nation of Israel, when the nation of Israel came and Moses came as a deliverer, he said the moment the word of deliverance and healing came, what happened? Pharaoh said, is it not because they are idle? You see that? Is it not because they are idle? That they can have the time to do this. What is the strategy? He said, occupy them. Are you getting the strategy now? O give them more work. Let them be more involved that they will be carried away. This was the same spirit that was at work in Martha. Jesus came. There was Mary and Martha. Martha was occupied. And Jesus looks at Martha and he said, Martha, Martha. 
you are upset you are worried you are occupied this is the spirit it's a religious spirit it has been released upon the body of christ ministries are just adding programs they think it's advancement this is a strategy from the kingdom of darkness occupying more people so that they are carried away more departments are being formed more things activities this is the same spirit that distracts men matter matter you are worried and upset about many things he said one thing is needful in other words many activities and ceremonies that we do in the body of christ are totally useless because they are not part of the things that god designed to bring man into his prophetic agenda are you listening to what i'm saying so the consolation is crowd the man of god is convinced that there is a crowd inside and outside thank god for that but let me tell you the truth there is a degree of conviction we do not have every time i say this people think i'm being critical or judgmental many of the people that come here and suddenly right where they are the demons begin to leave many of these people go to churches on sunday what is happening to our churches i say this with a sincere heart of love there are many activities people hold the mic under the influence of demons and sing and the pastor who is teaching about the gift of the spirit cannot even discern yet he calls himself a prophet something is wrong persuasion i'm convinced i'm convinced that no man can take my life I'm convinced about this not a man born by a woman hallelujah because the bible says i set before you life see every time you are listening to god's word whether it's through reading it listen please or through listening to a message you were there the day i was praying for the lady what happened when a koinonia message was played I don't make to brag these messages. Listen, I saw something that surprised me. I will be the last man of God to try to exalt myself for any message above another. But there were worship songs that were playing. And this, this lady was just lying down under demon spirits. Nothing happened. Quietly just lying down. The moment we switched, just one, the worship. Suddenly, what happened? Under the influence of the demons, she ran and went and switched off my television. Is here this is some and then we were sitting the next thing we saw this lady carry my table knife if not because kenny held her they would have said i killed somebody there what did these demons hear many of you wonder why the messages are spreading it's not a man there is there is grace there is no what i'm saying is not spectacular this is not the first time you are hearing this but there is a spirit the words that i speak unto you they are coming from a depth of persuasion i'm not speaking theory that which i have seen that which i have heard that which our hands have handled look at me don't go god isn't done with you yet please just let them because there is a river flowing in this place someone wrote that song let the river flow there are many worship teams in many churches the church is a desert and they are singing let the river flow listen god is not happy with this let me tell you this is a very serious message a hypocrite is one who claims he understands the reality of a thing but it's not working in the experiential reality of that truth. He would go to just one meeting and sit down and see what is being done. They will hear just one scripture and that scripture will become life in them and they will begin to walk in its reality. But right now we have a lot of things. People who believe God. There are people, I preach this somewhere. On Sunday, Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. 
Lord, you are faithful. There are challenges in their lives. By Monday, somebody calls them and says, there's one place. The Holy Spirit is already telling you that this is not a godly place. But what happens? It tests your persuasion. You say, well, I will go so long as the man is called a pastor. But the Holy Ghost has told you. But now you choose to look at the things that are going on in your life. Can I tell you something? If the body of Christ does not strengthen her persuasion about kingdom things, we will not last. Are you listening to me? Because Satan has mastered the art of using your senses to dwindle your convictions. But Abraham, when he was a hundred years old, considered not the deadness of his body. Both of them had passed any stage where reproduction and childbirth is possible. Bishop Oyedeko, I listened to a message by him recently. And the Lord told him that between now and the 28th of July, every single living faith church will double their congregation. Now you may criticize him and say, what in the world is this? That means there will be massive salvations. Convinced. Do you know that your coming for koinonia tells that you are convinced that service will hold? Is that correct? Imagine if you remained at home and you told somebody, just come and find out. Uh -uh. You were convinced. When you were climbing the bike, the bike was going with you. You didn't doubt for once. What if the service does not hold? This is called conviction. We are not persuaded about spiritual things. When you lay hands on the sick, what is happening to your spirit? Do you truly realize that something is leaving you to step into the person? When you are speaking to someone under the influence of devils, what is happening to you? The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them. The Lord is walking with Joshua Selman. I'm convinced. Can I tell you something? It is your degree of persuasion and conviction that will open doors for you in the spirit. Is Ada here, Aaron? When he comes, let me know. Praise the Lord. Say after me, I'm persuaded. Everybody say it, I'm persuaded. My brother, the guy in yellow, please come. My sister, you with purple, come. Please come quickly. I want, we're going to pray shortly. I want to communicate the thing that is burning in my spirit. Come, come, come. Have you given your heart to Jesus Christ? Do you read your Bible regularly? Do you believe what is written there? Everything. Is it true? Has it been working in your life? Tell the truth. Everything is not true. I'm not embarrassing you. But I'm telling you that if you will take this word and believe it. My dear, how are you? Do you read your Bible? Very well. Do you believe it? Have you seen the things that are written there happen in your life? Not yet. It will become true in your life. And this is my prayer. My brother, may you experience, listen, look at me. If you are experiencing what the Bible says, are you listening to me? In reality, you will not be able to move from here to your house. People will run over and hold your clothes and try to tear it. If the word of God is truly working in your life, people will run over themselves. Are you hearing me? It's not working. It's not working. Just believe me. If two dead people are raised here right now, according to the integrity of God's word, next week from 12 o'clock, if you come, you will stand in second equa. Is that true? Is that true? You do not know the power of activating the word of God to walk in your life. There is so much. God bless you. Bless you, my brother. Look at me. 
Are you embarrassed? I pray that God will cause you to walk in this truth. You know why I called you? Because you will walk in it. God will use you and even you. That's why I called you to use you. Hmm? God bless you. Hallelujah. That's why I sang that song. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Let me ask you a question. Look at me. If someone were to suddenly carry a gun right now and appear in front of us, a real gun, not a toy. Hallelujah. And wants to spray that gun on everybody, beginning from me. Or, let's assume there's somebody in this crowd now that was sent to come and shoot me or kill me. At that point, are you still persuaded that I shall not die? but live to declare the works of the Lord. Many of you are just saying yes. I've seen armed robbers on the road. I tell you the truth. No man born of a woman, no man born of a woman would be able to take my life. I do not live by the sword. I will not die by the sword. For my Bible, to see, the part of the word that you believe is the part that will work for you. Are you listening to me? The part of the, that section of the Bible that you take as true is the one that will work for you. I'm speaking by revelation. There is a spirit that stands behind a man that holds a gun. No mortal man has the audacity to do that. There is a spirit. And if you look at the man, you will be afraid. But that spirit can bow to the name of the Lord. If somebody looks at you and says, Sam, I am going to a herbalist for you. Many of us panic and say, hey, 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 please, Bishop, stand. Somebody said uh, yesterday, conviction, conviction, conviction. Whoever predicts your downfall is wasting his time. For your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Listen to what you are saying. You've not even listened to it. It's built on what? And what? What does that mean to you? On Christ the solid rock I stand. See, this is the reason why I love Christ's embassy a lot. For this singular reason. They are men who are persuaded. Are you listening to me? When I'm talking good about a ministry, I mention their name. When I'm flogging out issues, I don't mention names. When you see the way an average Christ embassy person prays, you know they believe in what they are doing. Many of you are filled with the Holy Ghost. You pray in tongues, but you are not yet convinced of its ability to change you. So your praying in tongues is of non-effect. You waste six hours, ten hours, yet you see churches that do night vigil every week, but they are not changed. But that's not true. Because scripture cannot be broken. Have you had people say, I've been believing God for the past 10 years. I've been believing God. When are you going to rest in that reality? I have been believing God. And God didn't do anything. Therefore, I will change my mind. You never believed in the first place. You never believed. Are you listening to me? You never believed. Because those who are, belie who are believers can die without receiving the promise. And not change their convictions. To death, Bin Laden did not say anything else. Even when they had captured him, he would have quietly said, Truly, from today, let me tell you that all this Bin Laden is the old one. This is a new person. He rather die than dwindle his conviction. 
many of us are not convinced there is no demon there is no spirit that will stop the advancement of e and i if you ever saw a spirit in a vision it will stop from that vision it will never happen in this realm i assure you there is no spirit this is not because we are bragging the hands that lifted us will uphold us till the end we will not be afraid for the lord is our light and the light of our life and we will not be afraid this is what i believe in myself that the hands that lifted me will uphold me till the end let me tell you if you are waiting one day to hear that ah joshua selman has fallen that's only a dream if you ever see it is a nigerian film because the bible says now unto him that is able to keep you from falling there is, see this is not boasting it's persuasion adeboe went somewhere and there was a plot by a woman they had arranged a woman who will come and jump on him naked so that they will snap it and put it on paper how many of you know that if you throw a great man down you who threw that man will take his position you will suddenly become famous while the man goes down and while he was going the holy ghost spoke to him listen the holy ghost spoke to him he said carry your wife <laughs> He said, carry your wife. And you know how he talks. He said, he told his wife, let's go, please. And when he went to the hotel room, he stayed there. And they were ready. The camera person and this, when they knocked the door, he wanted to go. The hand that lifted him will keep him till the end. He was about to go, but the Holy Ghost constrained him. And he told his wife to go and open the door. The moment she opened the door, there was this lady only to discover that it's a woman. How will you pose that? That one thing would have wrecked, redeemed and wrecked the whole world to its foundation. Apostle Johnson Suleiman was speaking. He said he was in his hotel room when a lady knocked his door. He said, you have a parcel from the receptionist. Immediately he opened the door. That's how she stripped herself. He said he looked at her and in his mind he was saying is this how i will end is this how everybody who has looked upon me but there is a hand that lifted him it will uphold him till the end are you persuaded that god can keep you i've shared with you my story i was in worry when a lady came and knocked my door I opened this door this lady was practically naked there was nothing left there when I saw this lady I thought about you I thought about God I thought about my parents I thought about my destiny he leads me and guides me to the city up above he leads me and guides me to the place of destiny. He leads me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to the place of destiny. There are many of you, listen, when you get convinced, Satan will sit down and plot something against you. And while they are plotting it, God is using them to construct a ladder. This is how you will walk upon them to a new level. And they will say it was not part of the plan. For if they had known this, they would not have crucified. If Satan had known that what he was doing was sowing a seed, he would move everybody to stop Jesus from dying. You are not persuaded. That's why what you are going through is killing you. You are already offended. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you face diverse temptation. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith produces patience. And let patience have its full cause. Men of dexterity and stature. This is what we lack in the body of Christ. 
men who fall like a leaf men without conviction a husband does not come you're already panicking they say there's a service somewhere you say please can you take me there oh god send a prophet this husband must come i give god three months there is no rest you have not entered the sabbath of faith when you enter that point you understand I believe hi, 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 hi. I'm a believer I'm telling you when I get up in the morning I thank God I don't know what happened through the night but I know I thank God only God knows the unseen battles day and night only God knows the meetings that go in hell every time to stop this meeting every Friday but you are still living as if Satan does not exist this is called dominion Many of you are afraid. Every time God anoints you, you are afraid. You are afraid of ladies. You are afraid of scandal. Every little thing, you want to explain yourself to everybody. Do you not know that there is a hand that took you? A bike man, I took a bike today. And I was trying to, I gave the man 1,000 naira. And he could not give me change. Because he did. He, well, he had change, but it was all his money. 20, 20 naira, 50, 50 naira. I told him, I said, sir. Okay. I told him, take this 1,000. When you get change, bring it back. He looked at me. And I said, all this money, if you give me, where will you have change? He said, the God that gave me this one will give me again. Ha! I said, Josh, shame on you. Shame on you. You are coming to preach this night. You should have known that. You should have collected that money and blessed him. And say, it is within my power to call forth greatness to you. And Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham. There are many men of God that declare over people, but what they are doing is just a religious benediction. If you truly are convinced, do you know that if somebody just shakes you, something will leave you into that person? I'm not talking about falling down. Someone will shake you and just find out that Dorsey did not bargain for his opening up. This is what I want you to become. Men and women of conviction. Many of you fall like a leaf. This is why somebody will come to sleep with you. You know that the Bible says flee fornication. Say it after me. One more time. Louder. Say it until something in your spirit happens. You enter the car. No conviction. You cross flyover. No conviction. Until you find yourself. In Novotel in Abuja. And the man says, This is the place. I say, really? No conviction. No conviction. Or oh, when it's time for exam, you look at question one, Greek, question two, Aramaic, question three, Hebrews. Your neighbor says, All right, let me just help you. Even God understands. At that point, the Holy Spirit brings all the scriptures you know should encourage you. But at that point, you think of my father. What will I tell my parents? How can I spill over? Will they know? Are you not merciful, oh God? What is your degree of conviction? There are some of us, when you carry your tight, this is how you are frowning, you are just coming. Just you are saying myself, all these people, this coin on your people. Let me just do it. At least my roommates knows that they bless me. Stretch forth your tights, Father. Thank you. Yes, and take your thing. No. You are not convinced. Whenever your state comes to give you scholarship and they go before um, guidance and counseling, you go there rejoicing. Even if you have not eaten the substance of things you hope for, the evidence. The moment you see the officer, you start laughing. Today, to dinner, today I will eat. You, in your mind, you have finished cooking. This is conviction. No amount of rain will stop you from leaving that place. You are not going. You are persuaded. But why is that not happening to your Christian experience? Many of you say, oh, I'm one with the Holy Spirit. But is his reality at work in your life? Do you hear him? Does he lead you? Because there are many of us that have made too many stupid decisions in our lives that convinces us that the Holy Ghost is not at work. I know we are all growing, 
but where it becomes perpetual and continuous uh -uh, something is wrong are you listening to me one more time lift your bible say i believe in god and i am convinced that the issue of my health has been settled the issue of my finances has been settled the issue of my protection has been settled i am a success i'm not a failure i'm the head i'm not the tail koinonia look at me i beg you in the name of the lord jesus christ believe this believe this we are wasting our time here if you don't believe this are you listening to me believe it this word will not fail you this is the word that brought koinonia to being you were not here the word took you from where you were and brought you here this is the word i would die believing this word i'm persuaded if nothing else ever happens in my life i believe it there is no meeting that i will go to that god will not do great things i'm not trying to believe it it has become my reality because i have become a portal for god to find expression this is my conviction this is my conviction my hands are blessed hands i believe it if i shake you you are blessed i'm telling you if i call you blessed you are blessed my word you see i give voice to the word of god in the spirit i can call things that be not i can program things that are in time and eternity to come and synchronize i can forward things in your life by the power of the word of god and elisha said oh king let naaman come and he will know that there is a prophet in israel Elijah was so convinced he was laughing at the prophets of Baal. If it was me, while Baal was busy struggling, I'll be praying, Oh God, please don't disgrace me. I will be in a, in a moment of worship. Elijah was laughing. When you pray, you don't pray for the food to enter your mouth. You are convinced and you are persuaded. Even when you are lying, you believe that your voice box will still speak out that lie. You are persuaded. He is able, more than able, to accomplish what concerns me today. Lord, you are able, you're more than able, yes, I know you are, to handle everything that comes my way. You are able, more than able. Sing it from your heart. To make me what he wants. To make me. Listen to what you are saying. You're able to make me what you want me to be. You're able to take me where you want me to go. You're able to show me what you want me to see. You're able to teach me what you want me to know listen be persuaded your parents tell you there is no school fees you say i know my bible says the part of a just is as a shining light you may be a madman give voice to the word of god activate it in your spirit believe it don't be weak. Abraham staggered not 
at the promise of God through unbelief. He counted him faithful. Do you count God faithful? Every little thing, believers seeking out. Every little challenge, they run. If you, if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Job said, though he slay me, I am convinced. Yet will I praise him. He said, I know my redeemer leave it. Are you convinced? You trusted God for four point something. You checked the board. You saw 1.5 with four carryovers. And so what now? And so what now? Now you turn aside and say, God, look at what you have done. Are you really strong that way? You are not convinced. We have many Christians who are not convinced. I'm telling you, your conviction is small. And if you do not strengthen your conviction, it will dwindle. If I have no food to eat right now, let me tell you what I will do. I will hold my stomach and I will walk up and down my room and I'll say, Lord, I bless you. I know my Redeemer lives. That's the song I will sing. I know my Redeemer lives. Listen, that's what you must see. If I can get you to a point where you are persuaded, I tell you, every message you hear will become living and active. There's too much destruction in our churches. Many messages, many series, no conviction. And so we cannot walk in the reality of it. T.L. Osborne, great man. See, Paul, Peter said, such as I have. At what point did he know he had something? Because when Jesus called him, he didn't have anything. That means there was a day, there was a time when he knew he had something. Everybody say, I have something. I have an anointing. Please say it. I have an anointing. I am not weak. I am not small. I'm strong in Christ. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm favored. The favor of God compasses me as a shield. I may not see it right now, but I'm convinced about its reality. And the word of God will bring it to pass. Say one more time. I may not see it right now. I may not hear the news right now. But I'm convinced. The job is coming. The child is coming. The breakthrough is coming. The prosperity is coming. This is faith. This is faith. This is faith. There is nobody that tells us every Friday that there will be so 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 and so number of people but the protocol know that the prayer band people are praying and they are setting the atmosphere and based on that conviction they go and get cheers and bring and God is alive and active watching over his word to perform it what have you believed God for many of us you've never really believed God for anything aside from your salvation do you now see that it's possible to come out for an altar call and not be saved Oh yes. There are many people. I tell you the truth. Many pastors will criticize me for this. That you came out and recited altar call prayer. Does not mean you are, you, are, you, are, you are saved. The Bible says whosoever shall believe. Shall call upon the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. Not whosoever shall speak English. You now see why on the day of Pentecost. While Peter yet speak. He spoke to men who truly opened their hearts and the Holy Ghost did not ask for the permission of any man. This is the reason why sometimes we are worshipping and God begins to do great things such as this. There is an atmosphere of faith. Many of you have surrounded yourself with nonsense that chokes away faith. Themes that dwindle your convictions ungodly music that dwindles your conviction say it does not matter 
Jordan is here. His bookstore is here. Why don't you go and buy books? Why don't you sit down with the word of God? I made up my mind that my entire environment will speak faith. You don't come to my, my place and talk unbelief. I will send you out. I tell you the truth, I will send you out. Politely, but sternly, you will go out. Many of you, all you speak are languages of faithlessness and unbelief. Every time you enter someone's room, the moment you come out, you leave the person worse than you met the person. Ah, now wow, well, no food in this room, koinonia care. All of you koinonia people jumping, jumping. Me and you, who is better? You see it? You see it? Anybody that comes and speaks like that, don't be angry. Don't criticize them. You see that? But I tell you, be far from those kinds of people. They will dampen your faith. The moment God tells you, Pastor Williams, you are rising from glory to glory. You are moving from grace to grace. If I have a dream that does not look like what God has told me, I will change it. Did you hear me? Many of you think if you have a dream, I saw it, hey, it will come to pass. Uh -uh. Job said, has thou commanded thy morning? A man can command his morning. We're going to rise up and we're going to pray. We are going to make declarations of faith and say, Lord, I repent of unbelief. I want to enter the Sabbath of faith where I'm convinced and nothing will move me. Rise up on your feet, everybody. When a season where God is bringing miracles, when a season where God is doing mighty things, hear me inside and outside. Believe this message because it comes from the Lord. Are you ready to pray now? Prayer point number one. You are going to say, Lord, every spirit of unbelief in my life, let it live right now. That spirit that makes me question the truth of God's word. Every spirit, come on, challenge it. Inside and outside. Every spirit of unbelief. Don't look at your neighbor. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. Your life can be better than it is if unbelief goes. Every spirit of doubt and unbelief. But I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. Rekete keshekete. Rekete baka prakata. La bako prokotope. Rekete kepeko sobata balabaraba. Pray. I curse every spirit of unbelief. Curse every spirit. Shake it, take it, balaraba. Rakata proko tope. Eko prosko sope take it. Sepre kete take it, balere bokos. Make sure you are praying. Unbelief concerning my health. Concerning my finances, pray. Concerning your academics, concerning your marriage, I cause unbelief. I cause unbelief. My God is able. My God is able. My God is able. Listen, the fact that your situation has not changed does not mean it cannot change. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The fact that your situation has not changed, listen, make up your mind 
that if my situation does not change, I will not be the one to change. Are you hearing me? One of two of you will give up one day. Oh, I've been speaking for one year. I've been speaking for two years. Abraham believed God for 25 years. If it is genuine faith, there will be a performance. You are going to pray right now. You know the areas of your life where you are trusting God for breakthroughs. Please, I don't want you to keep quiet. In the next one minute, pray radically like a, like a priest. Lift your voice. Challenge your finances. Challenge your spiritual life. Challenge your ministry. Share ye the word of the Lord. Share ye the word of the Lord. Share ye the word of the Lord. Grace. Grace. Increase. Multiplication. Academic excellence. Academic excellence. Divine health. Longevity. God is faithful. Shake it, take it, never carry a bala raba. Rakata preke te bele de bos. Rotos ko preke. Gapo kapriya talaba. Seketa. Lekon dos ko sokoti araba. Rapari eke te. Reke to krasta. Outside. Make sure you are praying. Outside. Make sure you are praying. Pray like a priest. Pray like a priest. Prayer works. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous man availed much. The effectual, fervent prayer. Shake it, Rakata, break it, take it, I command breakthroughs. Come on, pray for your life. It will change. Don't keep quiet. It will change. It will change. Forget about what you are seeing now. It can change. For the things that are seen are temporal. The things that are seen are temporal. The report you had is temporal. Shakata balaraba. Rakata bata. I change reports. 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 I believe the report of the Lord. I change reports. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Jesus is the word. But you are the one that gives voice to that word. You activate it. Making it potent. John said, I am the voice of one crying. I give voice. I give voice. When you begin to speak the word, you activate it to produce. It becomes living and active. Right now, you are going to pray. You are going to prophesy what you know the word of God has said over every area of your life. Don't keep quiet. Even if it's only one scripture you know. Are you ready? Are you ready to pray? Lift your voice and prophesy. My part is as a shining light. Favor. Everywhere I go, the Lord is my portion. The Lord is my inheritance. The Lord is my portion. Oh, hallelujah. Favor follows me. Everywhere I go, I break forth from the left to the right. In the name of Jesus. Prophesy favor. Prophesy blessings. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above. I'm not beneath. In the name of Jesus. My path is as a shining light. My hands are blessed. 
I have the spirit of excellence. Pray. 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 Koto keteke. Reketeke pro koto balaraba. Rapaka pros. Rekete koso kete. Rekete. Things are changing. Your life is changing. Your life is changing. You have authority. You have power. Is resident within your spirit. Power to change. Power to adjust. Go so take Rekete pros. Reke pros. You may be small, but you are powerful. Greater is he that is in your spirit. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We, having the spirit of faith, as it is written, I believe and therefore I speak. I speak long life. I speak greatness. Everywhere I go, men follow me with favor doors are opening unto me in the name of jesus the anointing upon my life is increasing from glory to glory grace to grace you enlarge my coast like jabez and move from glory to glory koinonia is rising ever increasing rising new levels of power new levels of grace we are not small I refuse poverty. Shake it, Kabbalah. Pray. The spirit of holiness is at work in my life. The spirit of purity is at work in my life. In the name of Jesus, I am pure. I am holy, blameless before the throne, commended by the blood of the Lamb unto Him who is able to keep me from falling and present me faultless before his glorious majesty declare declare that he may be justified declare I walk in blessings I'm favored I'm above only I give life to the word of God the secrets of God are with me because I fear him he gives me the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. The Lord teaches my hands to profit. I'm above principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. Pray, I cause sickness from my body. Command every disease to go. Command every infirmity to leave. Command every sickness. Resist the devil. Make sure you are praying. Command every sickness in your body to check out. Headaches, go. Fever, go. Go. Go, no inhabitant in Zion shall say, I am sick, I walk in health, I walk in health. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body, I refuse fatigue. Command my grain to go. Command every spirit, every demon, every enchantment, every covenant, every curse, every act of divination. Take it away from your life. I set myself free. Come on, pray. I set myself free. Every curse, every activity of witchcraft and manipulation, I curse it. It cannot stand. I'm anointed, I'm anointed, I'm blessed, I'm distinguished, I'm anointed, I'm blessed, I'm full of grace, full of power, full of wisdom. My prayer life is growing, my world life is growing, I'm becoming a champion 
in the spirit i become a champion a man of power power in the heavens power in the earth the ability to change territories miracles are wrought through my hands koinonia becomes a place of signs wonders miracles deliverance revelation prosperity excellence character Hallelujah. This is how kings reign. Give voice to the word of God from a depth of conviction and you will change your life. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Everyone inside and outside hear me. If you're here and you've never made a decision for Jesus Christ, you've never been born again, you've not given your heart to the Lord, or you once committed yourself to the ways of God, but for whatever reason you found yourself distracted and you've derailed from the path of God, no one condemns you. This is a place of liberty. This is where you find rest. The Bible says, come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You can't find it by yourself and nothing else can give you that rest. Right now in the name of Jesus, wherever you are, inside or outside, as the power of God convicts you, I'd like you to leave where you are and come out right now. Come to Jesus. Everyone, please clap for them as they come. Inside or outside, you've never given your heart to the Lord or you found yourself derailing. Please don't sit back. Thank you, my sister. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. The Lord is seeing you inside and outside. Please make sure you come. Don't sit back. This is the miracle. Don't sit back. Don't sit back. Bring them here. God bless you. Clap for them. They are coming from outside. No matter how far you have gone, let me tell you, God can give you a new beginning. Men may condemn you. But I want you to know you can start and run like Elijah. Keep clapping. They are coming. Thank you, Jesus. Young and old, don't be ashamed. Come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He will set you on fire like the foxes that Samson set on fire. And you will go and do exploits. Hallelujah. And those of you in front pray after me lift your right hand very high say after me lord jesus please keep coming my brothers say after me lord jesus lift your right hand if you are here for the salvation prayer as high as you can say after me lord jesus i believe you died for me i believe you shed your blood for me i accept that i'm a sinner unable to help myself but I believe your word forgive my sins cleanse me with your precious blood I receive eternal life into my spirit I denounce sin and Satan and I declare that from today forward ever and backward never Satan take your hands off my life I belong to a new family right now I declare that I'm justified, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. I have a new life. My past is gone. It's over forever in the name of Jesus. Now keep those hands lifted. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. The Bible says, for everyone that comes, you will in no wise cast away. I pray in the name of Jesus that this will be the beginning of a new life. Let this salvation be genuine. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. From today I declare that every habit, every challenge, every weight and power of sin over your life is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. From today you step into a new life. You begin to experience glorious things. In the name of Jesus, every voice that speaks against you, in the name of Jesus, I declare, sister, you are healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want you to follow the ushers. They will have your details and we are going to follow you up. God bless you. Please celebrate these great people. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, inside and outside, if tonight is your first time of worshiping with us in Koinonia, please, I'd like you to leave your seat and come out victoriously. We have a prayer, a prophecy, and a blessing for you. Quickly celebrate them as they come. This is your first time. You are welcome. Just find a place in front. Those outside, please just rush and come. Don't worry. Keep clapping. They are coming. God bless you. Keep coming. coming we are a chosen generation called for to show his excellence all I require for life God has given me I know who I am keep coming we have to wait for you we are a chosen generation called for to show his excellence all I require for life, God has given me. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. The Lord bless every one of you. How many of you were blessed tonight? Thank you for coming. This is Koinonia, put together by Eternity Network International. I assure you, your life will never remain the same. You will go back and you will experience the presence of God, the word of God. Several things will be activated in your spirit. Your mindset, your ideologies will change in the name of the Lord Jesus. As we pray for you, I'd like you to believe we are anointed. Everyone here is full of the spirit and anointed. And when we bless you, you are blessed. Hallelujah. Saints of God, stretch your hands and bless them. Bless him, coin on here.
every time you come before his presence. My faith reaches out to you. I believe your word for me today. My faith reaches out to you. I believe your word for me today. Sing it two more times. God's idea that in every territory there be apostolic and prophetic voices that coordinate the spiritual growth of a people within a territory. It is not God's desire that there be a barrenness of apostolic and prophetic voices that can build and equip people. Hallelujah. So God's system of kingdom advancement is territorial, such that in every territory, there must be representatives. The way the Bible will say, the church in Ephesus, the church in Philippi, the church in Corinth, there must be a church, a body of believers, a spiritual institution that is responsible for the upbringing and the maturing of the saints. Hallelujah. And we are glad and privileged that God has made this ministry and this platform an opportunity and an access point, a portal with which he will speak to this territory and by extension across the nations. We just returned from Abel Kuta this evening, it was an awesome time. The hand of God was strong upon that place and you cannot imagine how the teachings have set that territory on fire. We bless God for what he's done. Hallelujah. It's good to be back home. I missed some of you. Some. Some of you I didn't miss you at all. Praise the Lord. Tonight is a communion service, so um, we'll be having the communion later on. But I want to, I want to share with us something very powerful tonight. God is opening us up to the mysteries of the kingdom. Everybody say the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom represent the secret codes of operation. Please listen. Please listen. When we talk of a mystery, I know that I've said it again and again, but I want you to write it down. A mystery is a secret code of operation. A mystery is a secret code of operation. It 
it is a hidden strategy a hidden strategy usually spiritual a hidden strategy that guarantees a predictable outcome please make sure you're writing a hidden strategy usually spiritual that guarantees a predictable outcome one of the ways that God designed the church to rise in dominion listen one of the ways that in his infinite wisdom he designed that the church will walk in dominion is to grant them access to the mysteries of the kingdom Matthew chapter 13 verse 11 says it has been given to you the church the ecclesia it has been given to you to know the word know there is not to be aware it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom everyone say it has been given to me say it it has been given to me to know to understand to comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah the same way you see a husband and a wife please look up a husband and a wife and when a visitor is in their house they have secret codes of communication for instance the man has a secret way he tells his wife go and get the wine and bring for the visitor whereas the visitor does not know that a conversation is flying around him it's called a mystery there are mysteries in the kingdom that culminate into dominion the concept of dominion and kingdom authority is not an issue of chance it's not an issue of wish it's not an issue of begging it's an issue of contending to understand the mysteries the secret codes of operation witchcraft for instance thrives on mysteries hallelujah it's a mystery brothers and sisters when a herbalist invokes the name of a man in a calabash right and brings a picture of that person whereas the man is in town doing something else and then they pick up a knife or whatever it is and strike the picture and then as far as they are concerned the man is dead is that true whereas in the physical the man is making his own plans i should travel i should do this and that and he becomes an eventual victim of something that had been engaged in the book of job the bible tells us how that a man called job was a great man he loved god and he eschewed evil and then the bible says one day there was a meeting watch this there was a meeting in the heavenlies and job became the subject of discussion while that was happening did you know that job was not aware he was in the earth only for him to be a victim of the conclusion of a meeting that has happened somewhere and so when believers are equipped please listen when believers are equipped the bible tells us that the word of god is the sword of the spirit a symbol of authority and a symbol of dominion life becomes predictable when you understand the mysteries of the kingdom life becomes predictable success becomes guaranteed the the pathway of destiny becomes predictable only when you understand the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah let's see how we can get more people in even if it's just to squeeze standing please can we do that let's see how we can get occupy all these seats please take the empty seats there's no reason why there should be people standing there just squeeze them as as much as possible we really apologize this venue is already small um, so let's have them do that in one or two minutes if they can that's all right if they cannot it's okay just just squeeze around look for a place thank you jesus oh
mysteries that a mystery is a secret code of operation is a hidden strategy the bible says that these things have been hidden from the princes of this world so that no matter the level of a man's education no matter the level of physical and sociological orientation the bible tells us that it takes the spirit of god for a man to access the mysteries of the kingdom age will not reveal mysteries education cannot reveal mysteries social status cannot reveal mysteries orientation cannot reveal mysteries Eli who said in chapter 32 verse 8 he says but there is a spirit in man there is an agency of the Holy Ghost at work in a man that can bring illumination to your spirit man and make men of understanding It's not a scientific formula. It's not something you calculate mathematically. It's not something that you, you bring up like a chemical equation. It's an activity of the spirit. Mysterious, yet it can be understood. And one of the deep mysteries of the kingdom is what I want to share with us tonight. I consider what I'm about to share with us a part of the foundational mysteries that should be taught the church that when someone gets born again and filled with the holy spirit as we are teaching them the rudiments of faith and etc this mystery i'm about to reveal to us is an ancient secret many people have understood um, that it brings blessings but they have not been taught the dynamics of its operation help us tonight holy spirit hallelujah Praise the Lord. Write this word down. The blessing. The blessing. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26, Genesis 1 verse 26. And God said, and Elohim, the Hebrew word here is Elohim, is in plural. The singular is Eloha. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them, watch this, this is the mandate. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and um." over all the cattle the earth and every creeping thing watch this this was god's idea in the creation of man that let us make man in such a way that every element of creation can respond to them the same way it responds to us the cattle the earth the waters the wind let us create them with a spiritual equipping that makes creation to respond to man in the same way he would have responded to God and then this was a strategy 27 so God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created them read 28 the first four words one to read one more time one more time the Bible says, and God blessed them. I know that we've heard about blessings. To us, blessings just means to proclaim goodwill to someone or to, to, to bring in the supernatural to partner with the person. No, 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 no. The first time we see the word blessed being used in the Bible, and God, in order to fulfill that mandate of making creation respond to man, something needed to come upon man there was an ability upon man that will make creation begin to respond to him 
in the exact same way he would have responded to God. And the Bible says, and God blessed him. He released a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit upon man. And at once, watch this. The moment that anointing, that ability came upon man, at once, creation started obeying him. Please listen. The earth started obeying him. The cattle, the Bible says that he brought the animals together so that he would name them. No animal fought man. No tree produced thorns and thistles for man because there was something upon him. Please listen. Let them have dominion, not by fighting, not by trying to lobby their way, that something will come upon them that will empower them to use words because this is a sound planet it's a planet that revolves around words and then he says and God bless them and this is what he said would happen on account of the blessing be fruitful multiply replenish I give you an ability to bring things again even when they die and then he says subdue and it says have dominion please watch this so we see that there was a mysterious spiritual factor in the creation of man that made plants and animals and situations and circumstances respond to him it was not an issue of luck it was not an issue of age it was not an issue of gender there was a mystery a secret code of operation and with it Adam began to do mighty things watch this when man fell certain things happened man lost this mysterious spiritual enablement and at once creation started fighting man watch this creation no longer respected man again the animals the plants God never cursed man. He cursed the earth. Do you know what it means? In other words, he cut that flow of obedience from the earth towards man the same way it would have happened to him. Are you getting the point now? So man would no longer speak to the earth and say produce and then it would produce. And everything that came out of the earth and the waters began to disobey and fight man because something was lost. Man's life from that point became scientific man's life from that point became an issue of chance man's life from that point became an issue of experimentation man's life from that point became an issue of guessing every time God wanted to make creation obey man even if it was temporarily he through his words restored momentarily that very factor that's how Noah brought all the animals to the ark the Bible tells us that he was instructed to build an ark and that the ark would be of gopher wood no other wood would do so an ability came upon Noah to speak to the earth that only gopher wood will grow sufficient to be able to build the ark and Noah stood and called the animals and they started coming two by two seven by seven no rebellion and all through the period of the flood there was decorum in the ark because the blessing was at work are you getting what i'm saying please i want you to pay attention because this will change your life forever hallelujah this is exactly what happened to daniel in the den of lions when the angel appeared the lions were not afraid of the angel the moment something happened it suddenly became like the garden of eden and the lions calmed down no need for agitation no need for fighting creation under the feet of man circumstances under the feet of man because of an ability that is resident within him now watch this when God called Abraham, I needed to get this very easily. God called Abraham and said, Abraham, come. I am going to make you the father 
of nations i am going to literally make you the landlord of the earth and anybody who is connected to you i'm going to do something to you abraham that will make the earth obey you i will do something to you that will make you become um like the the originator of this spiritual civilization and watch this when he told abraham abraham was a weak man an idol worshiper who lived in a place called all of the chaldeans and then he says come out of your father's house and out of your kindred and all of that to a land that i will show you are you getting what i'm saying as at the time he spoke to abraham in chapter 12 of genesis he said i will let's go to genesis 12 from verse 1 and then 2. it had not yet happened in his life he was telling him what will happen he says now the lord had said unto abraham get thee out of your country from your kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that i will show you verse 2. read everyone one to read stop watch this look at what he's telling noah i mean abraham he's saying abraham i want to do all of these things to you i will make you a nation how will one man become a nation then he says i will bless you he says i will make your name great he says you shall be a blessing verse three read everyone want to read watch stop that let me explain something to you do you know the meaning of this in other words for any man to be blessed he must bless you listen 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 this is a deep spiritual mystery i will make you an epitome of blessing such that men can tap into your blessing by blessing you the more that every time they bless you they are authorized to receive what is upon you are you getting what i'm sharing now now and then he says i will cause him that cause you this is a dangerous statement and then he says in B that means the goal is not for this substance to remain on you alone the goal is that through you the entire creation like I intended in the garden of Eden will now walk in this factor called the blessing and they having the blessing will bring creation once again under subjection are you getting what I'm saying do you understand me so far this was God's proposal as at this time it had not happened yet it was a proposal he was making like you call a man and say follow me there are benefits I will pay you hundred thousand and I will give you weekends so God was giving him his proposal watch this a lot of us talk so much about Abraham and how that Abraham became great but I want to show you something very interesting that happened to him. Chapter 14, please. Open our eyes. 14 verse 17. Genesis 14 verse 17. Please, let's hurry up. The Bible says, and watch this. This was when they went to Abraham went to fight and recover Lot and all the things that they had stolen. It says, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of um, all that long name and of the kings that were there with him at the valley of Shaveh, which is the king's dale. Watch this, 18. Now we see a mysterious figure. Please listen. The first time we see the appearance of this man, no history. He says, and Melchizedek, who was the king of an ancient city of peace called Salem, brought forth bread and wine. Watch this. The Bible says, and he was the priest of who? The most high God. Let's see his encounter with Abraham. Next verse. He says, Abraham he blessed him okay let's look at 20 and then we'll come back to verse 19 so that we we'll understand it in context he said 
and blessed be the most high God which had delivered thy enemies to your hands and what happened the Bible says and he gave Abraham gave Melchizedek what tithes of all watch this so this is the interaction that happened Abraham meets this strange man called Melchizedek and he takes the tithe a tenth portion of the spoils and then he gives to Melchizedek and then Melchizedek pronounces a blessing let's go back to verse 19 and this is the blessing he says and he blessed him are you seeing now the same way God blessed Adam he says and he blessed him and said blessed be Abraham of the most high God how can I a man bless a fellow man with this kind of blessing he said you will be the possessor of both the heavens and the earth that means everything from the heavens down to the earth is your possession this is a very strange activation you can only bless men because such as you have you give who is this strange guy called Melchizedek that can bless a man and say from the atmosphere and the heavenlies let everything be subject to you and from that time watch this Abraham mysteriously began to be rich in cattle and, 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 and land and all of that and not only that from him came Isaac and not only him he became the father what we call the father of faith from this one encounter hallelujah now turn with me to Genesis chapter 2 so we see that the only interaction watch this the only interaction between Abraham and Melchizedek is tithe that's the only thing that brought them together tithe not a long story not discussions not conversations tithe Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 Genesis 2 verse 15 Arabosa and the Lord God took the man talking about Adam now and put him into Eden to dress it and to keep it verse 16 he gave him an instruction and the Lord commanded the man watch this please pay attention he says of every tree of the garden you can freely eat I give you access in the kingdom you don't own things you only have access anytime you are an owner in the kingdom it will bring worry it will bring stress the reason why high blood pressure is killing many people is because they are the owners of what they have in the kingdom you are only given access not ownership the prodigal son had access but he wanted ownership the moment ownership started lack and limitation started in his life until he returned back to access are you getting blessed now praise the lord so the bible says of every tree you may freely eat next next verse please 17 but of the tree watch this but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shall not eat it says for in the day that you eat thereof you will surely die now watch the instruction I give you every tree but there is one that I kept in the garden that is the tithe of that garden and it says do not touch it you can access every other tree but I put a restriction on this one leave it to me he said the moment you touch this one you engage something in the spirit that you may not know that will have to force you out of this place of abundance are you getting the point now for as long as man honored God with the tithe and did not touch God's designated portion we call it a portion that has been designated for God the Bible says man kept having paraphrasing now 
abundance of supplies and creation remains subject to him are you seeing that this is not just about abundance this is about dominion this is not just about abundance this is about dominion our theology of tithing is tied to just money wrong tithe is an ancient mystery of dominion watch this the bible says your dominion is at the mercy of many mysteries including that of the time and then watch what satan does he comes to man aware of god's principles and then he makes man to touch the tithe god's portion as soon as that happened man lost dominion he went out of the garden of eden the garden of the lord and all of that began to happen in his life suffering hardship creation no longer respected him so when melchizedek came to abraham this is what he was telling abraham in effect abraham nothing will respond to you and that prophecy that god wants to bring to you will remain inactive you will have to activate this operation and the way you do it is to bring god's portion as a symbol of honor and a recognition watch this the moment abraham did that like adam like noah creation started responding to him we see dominion at work in abraham's life are you getting blessed now now watch this. the subject of tithing in the church has been erroneously taught or taught in an incomplete way we have taught tithing to be that um it is the way of running away from trouble or it is the way of bringing financial supplies to a church and so many believers have not been taught that part of the ordinances that establish their dominion within a territory part of the spiritual laws that make both animate and inanimate things to respond to you as though you were living in the garden of eden is to bring before god the portion watch this no man can bless himself it is against the law no man can bless himself it is not given to you to bless yourself the tithe write that word down what is your tithe your tithe is a tenth portion one tenth your tithe is a tenth portion, one tenth of your increase. A tenth portion of your increase required by God. Write it down. Required by God as part of the spiritual mysteries that activates the operation of the blessing upon your life your tithe is a tenth portion of your increase required by god that activates the operation of what the bible calls the blessing upon your life what exactly is this blessing Let's talk about it in one moment. In the New Testament, we know that the blessing is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit. It's a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit that empowers you for dominion. It, it works in a way um, that authorizes creation to respond to you. Please pay attention. This is what we call good luck. This is what we call good luck. Have you seen human beings who it looks like no matter what happens in their lives, they are always at the point of advantage. Everything seems to happen well for them. We say they are lucky or we say they are fortunate. They are the ones men want to sow into. They are the ones people want to bless. When a situation happens like a, like a, like chance, the chance still lands on them it's not 
a mistake there is an operation of an ancient spiritual mystery upon their lives your gathering today is not just chance it's a direct operation of an ancient spiritual mystery that will work for anybody who knows how to activate its operation are you getting what I'm saying now this is very important so the Bible says, watch this. The Bible says how that you should bring, it says, um, all the tithes of the land, all of the tithes in the book of Leviticus, he said it belongs to the Lord. So the tithe is not just what you give God. The tithe is his portion in everything he gives you. The tithe is God's portion, untouchable. It is not something you do when you have money. It is one of the keys to commanding creation to submit to you. Please, I want you to, please, for God's sake, pay attention. Don't miss what I'm sharing with you. You will rise out from where you are to a dimension you never dreamt of if you pay attention to what I'm sharing. Every door in the spirit can be opened when you have the keys. That it refused to open for you does not mean it cannot be opened. Hallelujah. It's God speaking to us now. So you see that there is a relationship between the tithe, the blessing, and dominion. Everybody say the tithe. Everybody say the blessing. Everybody say dominion. I've defined the tithe. God's portion. Let's write down the blessing. Let me talk about it a bit. What exactly is the blessing and how does it operate in the life of a man? The blessing. The blessing. Is an operation of the Holy Spirit. If you want you can call it an anointing. It's a dimension of the operation of God. That activates dominion upon the life of a man. That activates dominion. That means the authorization to rule and reign over creation. The authorization to rule and reign over situations and circumstances. The authorization to make creation listen to you. The exact same way he would have listened to the Christ. Are you seeing why the devil fights tithe? Because he knows, watch this, that there is a relationship between your tithe, there is a relationship between it and the blessing. And then there is a relationship between the blessing and your dominion. How many believers think they are doing God a favor when they tithe? Now, in ancient times, um, your tithe represented any increase in your value. Whether cattle, whether sheep, um, whether land, whatever it is. But in our contemporary society today, because your money, your notes now, represents, is the representation of the value that you have. So your tithe becomes monetary. But according to God's original design, it's not just about money. Are you seeing why it deceives a lot of people? Because we think that tithe is about money, Naira now. No, tithe is about God's portion. Whatever it is that he has given you, there is a portion for himself. As a symbol, watch this, as a symbol of your acknowledgement that he is the provider. Two, as a symbol of your honor to him. Number three, as a connection to the continuity of that manifestation in your life. Let me tell you what happens when a man does not tithe. Do you know what happens when you do not tithe? The earth was caused by God. Watch this. The cause that God gave the earth is not the cause of the law. So the coming of Christ did not take away that cause. That cause, what Christ came to annul was the cause that came with the law. The cause upon the earth is still intact 
the earth here is symbolic it does not just mean ground alone it means creation you cannot avert the cause that is upon creation it's called the bondage of corruption you can only exempt yourself and the way you exempt yourself from its effect is tithing bringing back God's designated portion that every time you are not tithing the earth is authorized to treat you like the fallen man this is terrible and so you find out that all kinds of woes happen to people it was Malachi the prophet who arranged it together to give us some level of spiritual intelligence before Malachi we did not have the understanding that ABC will happen when we tithe and ABC will not happen when we do not tithe the curse is inevitable upon any life any church any organization that fails to tithe out of revelation and understanding this is the predicament of many of us sitting down right now looking at me it's not about lack it's not about lack it's about creation refusing to respond to you are you, are you getting the point now so your dominion is thwarted completely when God's portion is not returned to him hallelujah are you getting the point now this was what Melchizedek was teaching Abraham Abraham forget about dominion when you are still holding God's portion you cannot activate the operation of the blessing upon your life and then he says this and Abraham blessed him with all of the tithes and then a pronouncement was made upon his life that turned around his destiny let's go to Malachi chapter 3 please by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches Malachi please chapter 3 let's begin our reading from verse 8 and let's hear what the prophet has to tell us Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 everyone read the first five words one two read answer it the answer is personal that's what God is asking you will a man rob God ah, how does the prophet start talking about robbery now will a man will a church rob God will an organization rob God it's a question and then he said yet because your answer would have been no and he says yet ye have robbed me so the prophet is speaking on behalf of heaven and he's talking about the issue of stealing and robbery here it says but ye say wherein have we robbed you and he said in what in tithes and offering that means you have violated a principle next verse as a result read it watch this he says as a result of robbing me as a result of keeping back the portion that activates the operation of the blessing and compels creation to hear you and respond to you enforcing your dominion he says you are cursed not that God is saying I curse you he's saying inevitably you now become the victim of situations and circumstances because the principle of exemption has been violated are you getting what I'm saying now and then it says for you have robbed me even this whole a nation can rob God a church can rob God a business can rob God an organization can rob God it says whoever you are if you do not engage in this mystery of exemption and dominion inevitably the cause of creation will catch up with you it's not if it's when it will catch up then it gives you a remedy next verse bring ye how many 
is telling you now the prophet malachi is teaching us how to get back into the the mysterious secret of exemption that brings us into the blessing and brings us ultimately into dominion he says bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now here with say the lord of hosts if i will not these are the blessings now that will happen to you number one is what the heavens will be open write it down the first key that the prophet shows us that will happen to a man that dares to return god's portion is that you walk under an open heavens the heavens are closed over many people the heavens are closed over many churches you can produce posters and handbills and do everything you know to do when the heavens are closed it becomes obvious to men there are many people binding all kinds of demons and the demons keep mocking you because the moment you are walking in rebellion they are authorized to find expression they are called rulers of darkness their dominion is activated whenever there is darkness Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is not about money. This is about the quality of your existence. This is about dominion. This is about activating the blessing. That anointing, that, that grace, that agency of the spirit upon your life. Number two, he says, and I will pour you out a blessing. Now, this is, this is amazing. A blessing. It says that there will not be room enough to receive it. Meaning, I will pour you a blessing that your lifetime cannot exhaust it. Your very lifetime, you will have to necessarily transfer it to your children and children's children. Watch this. This principle of tithing is the surest way to guarantee the future of your children and your children's children. Anytime you fail to tithe, you just stole from their future and rob them every time you fail to tithe you sign a covenant of poverty a covenant with your children and children's children authorizing creation to fight them you will not have room enough to contain it you will have to transfer it so the bible says a good man leave it an inheritance for his children's children according to the order of the blessings of fatherhood and tithing it should extend to the fourth generation that means if you tithe you secure your generation to the fourth if your children tithe they secure their generation is god's system of maintaining dominion upon the earth are you getting blessed now how many of you are already signing poverty and signing hardship for your unborn children? This is what many of our parents did to us. And so you get up and you find out that creation fights you. Everywhere you go, everything is fighting you. You call it bad luck. Everything fights you. Everything fights you. Opportunities come and go. Nothing seems to work well. God's designated portion. Let me tell you something about the operation of demon spirits. Do you know why many people keep going through deliverance again and again and again and it does not happen? Because it's not just by casting. We are talking of legal grounds here. Are you getting me now? When a demon comes to manipulate an entity or an individual illegally, you can cast that person just by the name of Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? But when you willfully authorize the operations of demons there is no amount of prayer and fasting that will cast it away the only key that can speak is the blood of jesus that is the situation that he said they overcame them these kinds of cases it's not just by saying go out no they overcame them why because when you invoke the blood he comes in as your substitute that becomes the only remedy of him giving you a chance to start again how many believers have disgraced and mocked themselves running around from one deliverance house to another my job is not working 
I need promotion. Let me tell you, when creation fights you, you are a loser for life. I guarantee you. I don't care what opportunities open. I don't care what comes to you. When the creation does not submit to you, everything will work against you. Your children always become the dullest. When rain is washing houses, you are the one that it will wash your house. When anything bad is happening, I say, ah, why is bad luck happening to me? Bad luck is not happening to you. Creation is engaging the cause that you refuse to exempt yourself out of. See, Job knew this. Job, Job knew this. That was why he was so, he was so passionate about tithe and offerings to an extent that when his children were not even doing anything wrong, he would do it in advance for them. That's how the fortune of Job was restored. It's a mystery. You would think that a man who had gone to the lowest point in his life would never be able to rise again. But by the mystery. A man called J.C. Penny. Many of you know him. A Christian businessman. He began to practice tithing. And supernaturally, God started opening opportunities for him. And he rose to a, a point where his organization, you would call it too big to fail. And he said, look, I cannot be tithing hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, it, it's, it's too much. And he stopped. And everything was died. And he came back to the scratch. Let me tell you, don't play with spiritual laws. They are older than you. When you play with spiritual laws, it's like playing with fire. Whether you believe it or not, it will tear you into pieces and leave you there. There are people who have found peace with creation. It's like how elders do this. They call it appeasing the gods. So they pour small wine on the ground. They say this is for the gods. Well, take your own and leave us in peace. And it seemed to work for them. Creation fights non titers Write it down. Creation fights non titers Creation fights non titers The curse of creation fights non titers Your spiritual exemption from the curse that is upon creation is bringing God's designated portion and bringing it with joy and bringing it with understanding. Hallelujah. The Bible says, verse 11, And I will what? Rebuke the devourer. The only place in scripture where God tells you, just calm down. I will take care of the devourer. Do you know who the devourer is? The devourer is a spirit. The devourer is a spirit. He is the one who is an envoy of the curse upon creation. The devourer causes loss. The devourer causes death. The devourer causes mishap. The devourer causes misfortunes. This is the ministry of the devourer. Whenever the curse is ready to catch up with you, the devourer comes. Mysterious accidents. Mysterious failures. Inexplainable setbacks. Circles of misfortune. The curse of creation is catching up with a man. How many rich people are living as if they are not working? They thought the, the secret is promotion. Then they got a job and it has not changed. You buy a new car. Somebody just goes out to test the car and returns back with two tires because the car is scattered into nonsense. The moment they pay your arrears, five million, you fall sick. Your wife falls sick. The children fall sick. They keep treating them. When the money finishes, they are healed by themselves. The devourer. The devourer. Are you getting what I'm saying? You enter the exam hall and then you blank out and you come out. You are conducting tutorials for others. But you yourself will not be able to excel. It's not just fasting. It's not just prayer. 
it's not just deliverance in terms of casting out demons i tell you the truth see listen listen to me you know why there are many people before you lay hands on them the demons fly out they just went for retreat as soon as you want they just say yeah, let's stroll out and allow this this guy to just roam around and waste his time because they know that they have been authorized see you cannot destroy principalities you can only dominate them that's why the bible says christ is the head even christ recognizes the presence of principalities are you blessed please it says and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground your ground is anywhere you plant it could be your job it could be whatever it is that you are doing it says neither shall your vine cast her fruit before her time saith the lord of hosts and then verse 12 the last verse says all nations shall call you blessed and it says for ye shall become a delightsome land the word delightsome is the word well favored is the word fortunate fortunate well favored right fortunate so if i walk to this brother and say brother take 10 naira and he collects people say ah you are lucky no you are not lucky and then he goes outside and another person says are you so 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 and so please come i have something for you say kai bros you are lucky oh no you are not lucky you are at peace with creation there is a mysterious supernatural anointing upon you a church that does not tithe i guarantee you in the name of the lord they will struggle forget about dominion whether financially or everything i know churches that threaten their members if you leave my church i will curse you better come and add to the numbers and they say people come and receive miracles and go and they move all around they are always broke they are always begging things are always not happening creation does not have any respect whether it's koinonia or whatever god himself spoke a curse who will revert the curse listen while you are seated or standing looking at me this is a key to supernatural exemption from the vicissitudes of life you want to survive in the nigeria of today please exempt yourself from the nonsense that is killing people look at how high blood pressure is destroying people because creation has refused to obey them money come to me now say are you joking does it happen just like that it only happens the creation will only hear your voice when God's portion is returned to him and so there are people watch this there are people that get up in the morning brothers and sisters before evening there are untold blessings upon their lives people go out of their way to favor them a lady is moving around you may think she's not as fine but you see all the brothers who are praying for pursue her and they say we are not embarrassed ah there is an ointment ask esther there is an ointment it does not just happen it's a distinguishing anointing it's an ability of the spirit that causes things to the best way i can use it i can describe it is fortune or good luck nothing just happens there are no customers coming in my shop. I, I don't know. Let's paint the place green. You play, you can paint it green, paint it red, paint it white, paint it blue. If you are a robber, creation fights you. The very soil upon which your shop is laid upon will fight you. Who is God speaking to? How many of our parents have refused to tithe? They have been working since they were 20 years. Many of them are old right now. But there is nothing about their lives that show for it. Please, let me tell you something. Pay attention to this. Don't fight the Bible. You will be a victim of it. 
Now watch this. How does tithing relate to the blessing in the New Testament? Besides, let me tell you something. Tithing is not an Old Testament concept. It never came with the law. When the law was fulfilled and abolished, it was never part of it. Tithing is still relevant in the New Testament. Watch this. I want to share with you a very powerful mystery on how you activate the operation of the blessing in your life. Hebrews chapter 5. Adonai 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 You reign on earth Help me In your name We will rise Adonai You reign on earth The Bible in Hebrews chapter 5 begins to give us the high priestly ministry of Jesus. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 5 reveals Jesus now as our high priest. Are you getting the point now? The high priest of the church. Not just the second Adam alone. Not just the apostle of our faith. But the high priest. And then it starts by saying for every high priest verse 1 taken from among men is ordained for men in the things pertaining to God that they may both offer gifts and sacrifices for sin now go to verse 5 go to verse 5 we we'll read down to verse 7 it says so also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest watch this it says but he that said unto him thou art my son in other words god did not elevate himself to a position of a high priest it i mean jesus now the christ it was god the father who authorized him to function to carry out that ministry it says today i have begotten you verse 6 as he said also in another place now watch this he says thou art what a priest how long forever after the order of who remember we talked about that man melchizedek right melchizedek was a priest of the most high now the bible says jesus to the new testament believer is a high priest and he functions in the order of melchizedek what was melchizedek's function with abraham he received tithe and released the blessing that was all he did that was everything about his priestly office he received tight and released the blessings he received tight so christ in the office of melchizedek the moment you honor him with that designation portion the same way melchizedek blessed abraham he authorizes creation to start responding to you the bible says you are a priest forever please are you getting what i'm saying all that Melchizedek did because the Bible says he is after the order, meaning his function is in the similitude of Melchizedek. We never see Melchizedek doing anything except receiving God's designated portion and then activating the blessing on the giver. Christ himself awaits standing in the throne room for obedient believers. So the moment you bring his portion, he receives it as a high priest. Although you brought it to a church, although you gave it to a man of God, you are not sowing it. You are not doing favor. It's like you are answering a register and you stand before the throne and he receives it. And then he says, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And you come out and fortunes start happening and people start working against you mysteriously but consistently. This is the mystery. Christ has become our high priest after the order of Melchizedek so a church that tithes 
takes God designated portion and says Lord we know that in Nigeria there is struggle people do not even honor churches they don't honor men of God they blackmail them one little scandal and your ministry is dead Lord we do not want this devourer this is your designated portion and the high priest receives it and he says koinonia possess your territory possess the heavens and the earth and you were sitting in your room and something started moving you i won't come for koinonia but you found yourself here it's called the blessing it's a mysterious operation of the holy spirit how many lives watch this how many lives are under the yoke of the bondage of corruption some of you seated looking at me right now you can't wait for next week oh god miracle service my bailout i'm giving you a key i'm giving you a powerful key tithing has nothing to do with money tithing has everything to do with dominion tithing activates the operation of the blessing so creation begins to respond to you you may be small you may be illiterate but creation will respond to you doors will open on their own volition men will run over themselves to favor you while you will get into the same challenge that somebody is getting into a helper will come and take you out and leave the other person there because God's portion has been Listen, there was a time in my life I was born again, but I was not consistent with tithing. And I can tell you it was hell on earth. Hallelujah. When we started Koinonia, by the grace of God, we have been joyously and happy. It does not matter what offering or collection happens in this ministry. God's portion must be returned to him before anything is done i don't care what the money is for god's designated portion that is the reason why we will only keep going from glory to glory because everything within our territory supports us the national union of road transport workers asks the protocol they love us with all their heart the mopol and the ministry uh, and, and the military the, i mean we we have access to all their officers just like that Almost every one officer that has found himself working here has either been promoted or relocated mysteriously. Because when you come under a covering that is faithful, you can tap into that law of exemption. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I taught my mother this principle. I said, mommy, if you never do anything, please be faithful in time. There was a time my mother said she wanted to start selling logs of firewood. I said, my mother, is it that bad? But today, every devil in hell, every devil, including the ones that will be manufactured now, if there are any, they know that my mother is blessed. As every foul spirit in Zaria, I say it with confidence, not by boasting, but that these principles are irrefutable. It will happen for students it will happen for married people it will happen for business people god's designated portion the key to activating the blessing from titan is consistency 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 when the lord honors you with one million and you look at 10%, 100,000. Ah! Say, how? No, this is too much. Ah, ah. ah. How can I bring 100,000, bring it to Koinonia? Who are you? You think we're idiots? We just walk. Monkeys walking. Baboon is chopping. And you watch, watch ignorant people educate you in newspapers. Watch ignorant people who do not know God. Lambas pastors and put things about tithing the devil is using them they write articles that mock people and when you read it it responds to your greed and you say yes this journalist is wise they now say let's calculate if everybody in koinonia brings ten thousand tithe ten thousand times 
5,000 or 4,000. He said, Abba, is supposed to not reach. You see, let me tell you something. My blessing, my dominion is not tied to koinonia. My dominion is tied to my own personal tithing, my own blessing. I say it with all humility by the grace of God. I fear God. You can ask him. I have not failed. From the time I made up my mind, I am always faithful in my title. The moment God blesses me, the first thing is, Lord, your designated portion. Not, I beg, take Jare, let this cause live. No, with joy and honor, it gives me pleasure. That's why my life will keep remaining a mystery. You can only talk about it and maybe criticize it, but there's nothing stoppable about it. Uh -uh. There is an ancient mystery. This ministry you see is sitting upon a foundation that is unshakable and immovable. Many of you just got to hear yesterday or today that we change venue. I say this with all humility. How many ministries can afford that thing? To just change venue, you know you are coming to meet empty chairs. But it doesn't matter where we meet. There is a spiritual factor. I'm teaching you because it's not a reserve for koinonia. It's your heritage. So it's not the location of the business or the church that is making it fail. Believe me, creation is fighting you. People were standing under the rain. There are people standing under the rain. Do you think these people standing are idiots? Some of these people are noble men. Some of them are family men. Do you know what it means for a young man? We are talking of young people to just come and stand like a zombie for hours. Haba people. The only time you do that is when you are collecting your scholarship. Because you know there is a reward. So you say myself endure. Let's stand. It's a secret to sweatless dominion. You stand. I pray that God will make you see this mystery. Many of you are not faithful in tithing. You can start and then you just say, Kai. You bath whether it's convenient or not. Because you are aware of the consequences of not bathing. Sometimes you will need to drag yourself to the bathroom. And while you are murmuring, your body will say, bath and be healthy or don't bath and die. And then you have to choose. God is setting before you. It is not about witches and wizards. It is not about principalities and powers. It's about engaging the mysterious law that men have used from grace, from what, what do they call it, from grass to grace. It has taken men from nothing. People have slept by the wayside. You listen to a woman called Jemima Mbaya. Many of you have heard her teachings. This woman used to sleep on the road in Joss. She used to use a carton. But today she has become a voice. There was once upon a time this ministry. A few people were here. We used to meet on the floor just like this. Not even mad. But see what the Lord has done. Let me tell you. There is no situation in your life that is new. You can argue it and look at it. Or get angry tonight and say this is it. I found the key. This is it. I found the key. Ah. Tide your way out of misery. The, the yoke of bondage is too much. It will kill you. Tide your way out. Churches. Tide your way out of financial hardship tight your way out of suffering and hardship and misery stop authorizing satan my children and my generation by the grace of god will remain blessed forever god knows not just because i'm a minister imagine how blessed my children will be i have secured their future you would think it's because i'm in the position that i am but it's a mystery from birth till they go to be with Christ they will walk in the blessing listen look at me some of you were born in families where nobody believed in you right now as you are seated here you are the only hope of your family exempt yourself exempt yourself tonight exempt yourself 
we are going to take the communion and the communion will do two things number one the communion will advocate because it's the mystery of the blood because many of us right now the bondage of corruption is upon you you know it you can fake it listen let me tell you when everything is not working in your life there is a cause not the cause in your village creation is fighting you I met a young man who said he was getting ready to marry I said how much is your budget he said 3.5 million I said how much do you receive a salary he said 30,000 I said tie yourself to the altar otherwise die there with 20 20,000 per month tie your way to the altar if you are really interested in marriage please don't joke with what I'm saying I was thinking about this all the while while we were coming this was all that I was thinking about I said Lord will you help your people to understand tonight I have seen people in this ministry I have seen people that I know who will not be able to buy your God of 100 Naira I have watched them tight themselves to practical dominion don't think everybody seated here is broke and suffering let me tell you sincerely not everybody is under this cause of creation there are people who are at peace with creation Hallelujah. something mysterious happened today I made an order of something to come in and then um, the head of protocol went to get it for me and while we were coming someone called me and said are you this and that and that say yes I said um, I just saw you and I found out that we are from the same place he said the order that you made have they sent it I said yes he said wow I have already sent another one of that order to come in again you call it luck I call it the mystery of exemption exemption listen listen I, I want you to understand this. This is very powerful. That's why you hear people like Bishop Oyedeko. They may make some statements that look like they are bragging. A thief came. I think it was a thief or something. I heard the story that he came to living faith. He was standing outside just like this and he fell down and died. Nobody prayed. No police. A, the earth fought him to his death. There are some people that are untouchable. You just see, try to touch them and you see what will happen everything will fight you from your clothes to creation to the car that is carrying you you see them ordinary but those with them creation is for them you the more you criticize the more they rise it looks like they, nothing can be done there is an ancient mystery bring God's designated portion and reign in absolute dominion I tell you this even if we decide to hold koinonia in Gaskia, the exact thing will happen. Ask those who we, we went to minister in Funab. I don't think they have ever seen that kind of overflow. A gigantic auditorium. I think we'll show the workers during retreat. The same way it happens in koinonia. It was powerful. They almost tore my clothes yesterday. I returned with seeds upon seeds. The hampers, the bags that they brought gift in. They had to stop us at the airport to transfer it into something. I've not even opened it to see what is there. There are some of you tonight, you came with seeds to sow. Do you know why? Because when you bless me, it will come on you. It, see, this, this thing, is, this thing is, is almost like Ojoro. You become so blessed, people have to use you as a ladder to climb. But many of us have been cheated. Welfare, please bring the communion quickly. Many of us have been cheated. Hear me. As you are seated right now, there are many of us, everything is fighting you. Your family is fighting you. Your academics is fighting you. Your relationship is fighting you. Every door seems to close. Exempt yourself. We are first going to plead for mercy. Because these principalities is not the issue of prayer to say I cast you. Please. Gentlemen, sorry you have to make a little sacrifice right now. Please do not be offended. Everybody will participate in the communion. No, don't worry. I think you can stay. Hallelujah. 
as you partake of this communion listen this is a communion unto an empowerment to start tithing it's a communion that will supply strength to your spirit man it says for this cause many are weak many are weak many are limited for this cause many become sick mysterious sickness fibroids growing out of nowhere and for this cause many die Psalms 82 verse 5 Psalms 82 verse 5 When you are not a tither There is nothing you do that will work If it is working now You are only seeing a mirage I guarantee you in the name of the Lord A shock is about to come Your only scriptural exemption Is your tithe God's portion God's portion many of you saw titles coming and then when you saw titles coming you were just looking at them my tithe belongs to God no matter what happens I cannot touch my tithe even if the world is going places it is God's portion it is a matter of life and death his designated portion bring ye all the tithes Koinonia, bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse and prove me. I vow to you, no matter where you are, tight your way out of trouble. Tight your way to the top. The Bible says, they know not, neither will they understand. As a result, they walk in darkness. And all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Listen, this is one of the most powerful message you would have received this year. Whether you are a director, whether you are on a job, I don't care what you do. If you are not a tighter, you have signed up with struggle forever. Every time you refuse to tight, you have not only destroyed yourself, you have destroyed your children's destiny. How can I be so wicked as a father to allow my children come up? You can, you can have rema. You can be a prayer warrior. You can be whatever. If you are not faithful, the tithe. You are not faithful in tithing. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. This is a night of destiny. Lift your voice in one minute. Cry passionately to God. And say, Lord, thank you for bailing me out. Go ahead and pray. Thank you for bailing me out. Thank you for bailing me out. There is a bondage of corruption. There is a cause of hardship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lift your voice and say, Lord, as I partake of this communion, supernatural grace to never fail in my tithing. Now I see that there is a high priest waiting for me, waiting for my business, waiting for my church. There is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek that receives of my tithe and releases and activates the blessing. Lift your voice and pray. Are you praying inside and outside? 
communion is not something to eat when you are hungry there is a mystery the blood tonight will cry mercy it will cry out to the earth cry out to creation mercy and grace mercy and grace that's what the communion is for tonight mercy for your shortcomings grace for consistency hallelujah now look at me the bible says not to partake of the communion unworthily because although this may be wine and bread but i want you to understand that in the spirit the moment the power of god comes upon it it is the mystery of the very body and the flesh of the christ and the bible says partaking of it unworthily can cost you even your life you're here right now you have not given your heart to the lord or you have found yourself derailing the ways of the lord lift your voice in one minute and say lord i make my ways right according to the ordinances of the scripture let me not partake of the communion unworthily Lord, I cry for mercy. Please pray. I know you, you take communion all the time. But I tell you, this is a communion with a difference. We don't do religious things here. We do things out of revelation. Heaven and earth that you. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. Hallelujah. Now, in one minute before we direct you on how to do, I'd like you to mention all the things that you know are fighting you and declare that by the mystery of this communion, the blessing comes upon your life. Lift your voice and pray. Come on, you're not praying, Koinonia. Mean business with this. Is it your finances? Pray. Is it your health? Is it your job? Is it marriage? Relationship? I engage the mystery that brings the blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, you left your ordinance with the church. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands upon this communion set. I release the power of God upon it. It loses its earthly significance as an ordinary drink, an ordinary wine. And I declare that it takes on a heavenly significance. Lord, let there be deliverances as people partake of this. Let there be healings. Many of you, as you take this, there will be instant miracles, instant breakthroughs chains will fall off your life hallelujah now we're going to do it this way if you have a seat please sit down all those who have seats please sit down please do that quickly let's save time we're going to start with all those standing just pick the bread pick the cup and then drop it here and then please i think the rain may have i don't i think it has reduced a bit so those who take up this you are coming back in but please the moment you take it you can just give space so that we'll do that and then we'll coordinate very quickly the worship team you will guide us through powerful sessions of worship hallelujah praise the lord
Father, we bless this in the name of Jesus. Go ahead, Lord, we give you praise. Those seated, be praying in tongues. Lift your voice and be praying. Hallelujah. All right, direct them. You can begin to come now. In the name of Jesus, it is blessed. Please open it and let them partake of it. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. The mystery of the body. The mystery of the body. There is an anointing upon what you are taking. It's not a ritual. Shaka pakata pradagada bala debo. Rakata prakata gada bakoni alaba. Those of us see that make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Lord, this is the end of this captivity. Every manifestation of darkness that has stopped me from being a tighter and kept me in bondage. I cause it in the name of Jesus. Please make it snappy, make it snappy, make it snappy. The angels bow before you. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Please, as fast as you can, as fast as you can, make it snappy so that we save time. Heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Heaven and earth adore you. Let me encourage those going outside if you can accelerate your, your movement please those coming let's let's make it snappy there are already so many people outside and we have to hurry up Oh, we discern the Lord's body tonight.
is telling me that from this communion tonight is going to be rolling away the reproach of many people many people that's what the Lord is telling me that the age-long reproach of many people will be rolled mysteriously God has shown you the key the key the key to getting your life and your destiny back he's shown you the key that one key that's what will open you to a mysterious dimension of wealth hallelujah you are mighty on your throne you are mighty on your throne you are mighty on your throne you are mighty on your you were mighty on your throne. 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 You are 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 mighty on your throne. The blood speaking mercy and grace. Speaking mercy and grace. Speaking mercy and grace. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne.
five minutes we are going to blast in tongues and you are going to speak that every force that has authorized creation to fight you that has brought misfortune I like you to say the blood speaks help those under the anointing there please hold hands together and let's begin to pray those outside make sure you are holding hands and let's pray in tongues it's the season of the rain please help those under the anointing as you pray the power of God is going to be setting people free as we pray the blood is speaking the blood is speaking Challenging the devourer, challenging the devourer, challenging the forces of darkness. Rakata pakata lakate, shakata prakata labos. Embroto koto peke teke. Rakata bala raba kara bala 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 bash. Raba kata praga bala bala bash. Don't stop. Don't stop. Blasting tongues. For breakthroughs, oh God. For breakthroughs, oh God. Dominion over creation. Dominion over circumstances. Dominion over situations. Financial dominion, marital dominion, dominion over territories, dominion over environments. Let's 
em proko doskata rekete kete le boko sopas man pratas kata al kaparata sete es kete 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 be kete proko de balara vos man prata kata la vos em protos kotos kata shekete tete tete le kete tete kata barada ba rakata tata bakata barada balara vos prata tapa koto prekete Lekete kete kete protosopa, rakata tata tapa ta, rekete kete kete legetos, em protos kotos, malakata tapa, protos kata latipa, pre lekete legeta. It must change, it must change, it must change. Insist, it must change, it must change. Rakata la kata rakatos, rabata kata praga da bala da bos, maka pras kata parekete, enkrete te enkrete, elakete lekotos, maka pras kata likete, rekete te 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 praga da bala da bos, maka pratos kotos. Come on, press, don't be tired, don't be tired. Le prata kata la bos, maka ta ta ta, mata pratas kata, lekete te. We are engaging mysteries. We are engaging mysteries, mysteries of power, mysteries of dominion. Rapa bakata balada ba, lakata kata proskotos, emproto soto balaga de, skaparada ba balaba nobo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a season of the rain. Rain does not just fall. Let me tell you something. As you commit yourself to returning God's portion, never make anything steal away your passion for tithing. No matter what it is. As God blesses you, whether in your life, in your church, in your business, be consistent regardless of what you are seeing and you will activate an ancient law. You will activate a mystery. Melchizedek, the high priest, Christ, receives of your tithe and pronounces upon you and the earth, hearing his voice, will start walking with you. Everything in creation the stars will fight for you. The earth will speak for you. Men will speak for you. It's not luck. It's not luck. It's a mystery. It's not luck. It's a predictable mystery. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and I pray for you. The communion tonight speaks of mercy and grace. Mercy advocating for the legal access the devil has had. You have needlessly suffered the bondage of corruption because you have refused to exempt yourself. You have robbed God and so the curse is wounding you bad. But tonight, in the name that is above all names, the Bible says they overcome them. I command every devourer over anyone's life anyone's business anyone's academics anyone's marriage anyone's family here in the name that is above all names by the overcoming power of the blood we cause the devourer now in the name of Jesus Christ I command every principality I speak to every spirit in high places that you let God's people go free now. I declare grace like never before to be a faithful title. Receive it now. Grace to always appear before your Melchizedek, the high priest, with your designated portion, thereby activating the blessing. 
there is a part two of this teaching ah, yeah, 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 yeah. don't miss miracle service next next week friday will be fire i will show you the the mystery behind the operation of the blessing hallelujah there is another mystery i'll be sharing with you next week but i pray for you as you go and teach your congregations as you teach your roommates your fellow workers your loved ones i pray that this cause that is upon creation let it be far from you and your household in the name of jesus and therefore i speak to the earth you hear the word of the lord everywhere you see these ones they are exempted from the cause they are exempted from the cause of misfortune they are exempted from the cause of failure they are exempted from the cause of bad luck i release upon you the blessing in the name of jesus christ suddenly you will walk out of this place and you can't tell what will start happening suddenly calls that would not have come the moment it begins to happen know that an ancient secret suddenly your business that has closed people say open it for our sake open it for our sake suddenly the helpers of destiny that have always been there but a law has prohibited them will now be released into your life and destiny in the name of jesus christ i declare that for every family represented that will begin to faithfully bring before the high priest god's portion i'm declaring that the blessing begins to go to every home every nook and cranny of your activity for those that are students i declare that the mystery of success that 10 times better anointing let it be activated in your life right now there are some of you you don't receive support from home nobody supports you you are literally on your own there is a way out you don't need to know anybody on he said no we no man under the in the flesh don't let anybody fool you that you must know somebody if you know this law this one thing is needful you will watch strangers come to feed your flock you will watch your gates continually open to receive the forces of the gentiles i want you to test god i want you to prove him and let god beat you to your imagination i don't care what you studied in school i don't care who you know or who you don't know an ancient mystery that has been responsible for fearful levels of dominion father let there be remarkable testimonies beginning from today oh god may your people never default in bringing you the portion that is yours in the name of jesus christ whenever your faith wants to fail you in titan may there be a fresh supply from the throne in the name of jesus christ whenever your circumstance wants to make you look like you are wasting your time always remember melchizedek my high priest is waiting when you are in trouble that's not the time to eat your tight that's the time to faithfully go before your high priest and let that consistent proclamation of the blessing bail you out of any trouble lift your hands and give god praise hallelujah next week is our miracle service for the month of july is the seventh month please invite all your friends and everybody the venue will be at cgc it's going to be an an amazing time of impartations and exposition of mysteries and breakthroughs god is going to be bringing people into their testimonies please 
invite your loved ones invite everyone that you can bring because your life will never be the same now if you're worshiping with us this is your first time I want you to know that God brought you he brought you here to change your life please make your way to the front right now all first timers we honor you no matter how far you're welcome make your way to the front the Lord himself brought you to change your story sit back on and celebrate them appreciate them as they come see what the Lord is doing bringing them adding to us every day and every week hallelujah praise the Lord can we appreciate all these people standing before us give them a big 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 koinonia welcome hallelujah thank you so so much for making our time to come this is koinonia it's our meeting put together by eternity network international we meet every fridays our venue is cgc this is a special arrangement this is not our regular venue and next week is our miracle service please be there come and come again invite your loved ones i want you to know that we are anointed people and when we bless you you are blessed hallelujah we want to pray a prayer and release an anointing upon your life that will turn things around in a way that you have never seen. Stretch your hands, saints of God, and begin to bless them. We proclaim the blessing of this house upon you. We bless you with the presence of God. We bless you with passion for spiritual things. We bless you with an anointing. You go and begin to succeed. You go and begin to excel. We declare that your passion for God will rise above everything you have known. No more limitations in your life. We speak over your life. We activate the mysteries of the kingdom over your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming to worship with us. Now I'd like you to follow um, the gentlemen and ladies waving their hands. They will welcome you more warmly on our behalf and give you a few details and then you'll be back. God bless you. Please celebrate them, Koinonia, this way. Gentlemen and ladies, God bless you.